So this week I have been on a journey, a journey to find a clean tone on the guitar that I'm really, really happy with. So in this video, I thought I would just kind of share with you guys my approach, what I found out this week during my countless hours of tweaking, and hopefully it'll be information that you can use and adapt into your own rig. So whether you're using a guitar amp, or even if you're using amp modeling software plugins, all of the information that I'm gonna be providing today is gonna to be pretty fundamental, and it applies to both. So the key to the perfect clean tone for the guitar, I mean, it's something that is a very subjective topic because what I consider to be a great clean tone might not be what you consider to be a great clean tone. A clean tone of a Vox style amp is gonna sound different to a clean tone of a Fender style amp. But what I'm going for today is just the kind of best of the best quintessential clean tone in my mind. And those are Fendery, Dumble, to rock those kind of big warm clean tones with loads of bottom end but some nice articulation <laughs> So I think the first thing to think about, and definitely where it all begins, is how you kind of set your EQ on your amp. So it's really good if you can get as much volume as you can to begin with, because that's only gonna help the EQ, and it's only gonna help the amp breathe more, which is gonna make the EQ more responsive. Now, if you're playing at home, then there are limitations of this, especially if you're using valve amps, because sometimes it's difficult to get them loud enough to really kind of get them working. Now, because we're going for those kind of fendery, dumble, two rock type tones, it all kind of starts and ends with mid range. That is gonna be the fundamental thing to making sure that your notes are articulate and that they have plenty of body and room to breathe. Mid range is one of those things that you either love or you hate. I'm not a massive fan of mid-range in my clean tones, and that's why I love Fender amps so much, because Fender amps, their kind of signature characteristic, if you like, is a scooped out mid-range. So your mid control on your amp should be as low as possible, because that is gonna definitely give your notes a lot more room to breathe within the context of the tone. Amps that have kind of small chassis, so if it's like a 112 or something like that, think you're kind of Fender Blues Juniors, or maybe something even smaller, like a Princeton, for example, you're not gonna to wanna to crank too much bass in there because it just won't be able to handle it, and you'll get a load of rumble, and all of the kind of definition will basically go away, and it'll just sound really kind of flubby and horrible. So be generous, but also just be careful. Now, for treble, it's again something that you don't wanna be afraid of, Treble is definitely really important. I think a lot of people, when they think of like John Mayer tones and things like that, they think that there's not very much high end in that particular tone. I've seen John Mayer live and I can tell you now, he has plenty, plenty of high end and it certainly cuts through a mix. Now, we're gonna come on to that later on because a good clean tone in the room when you're just playing alone with no music is a very different thing to a good clean tone in the context of a song. So I wanna cover that as well. So a quick summary. If you're using a valve amp, you wanna have enough volume to make sure that your amp is working and that the EQ is gonna be responsive. You wanna scoop out the mids, you wanna have plenty of low end, but you don't wanna to be too scared of having enough high end to give your notes some clarity. But there are also things that you wanna be doing in the context of a song that might mean that those things need to be tweaked as you actually start to hear that tone in the context of a general mix. Okay, so I've just moved to the computer just to kind of explain this next part a bit clearer because when you're recording the guitar, you wanna make sure that what you're hearing in the room translates to your recorded sound as much as possible. Okay, so this is basically the logic session for the piece that I was playing at the start of this video. So we have the backing track at the top and then audio two is basically the guitar. So if I open the plugin first, because that was actually played 
using the Neural DSP Corey Wong plugin. And you'll be able to see on here how I've got the amp set. So I've got the volume set roughly kind of halfway, so it's really clean. It's not really adding any distortion or overdrive. It's just kind of at the point where the amp is working, but it's not breaking up. Bass I've got pretty much just after 12 o'clock. Middle, again, I've scooped that out, so we're looking at around four here. Treble is again going to be above Unity. So there's actually more treble than bass in this song. And presence is also really important because that's what's going to give your tone plenty of clarity. Now, when you're looking at kind of doing your EQ, then you can definitely do that in the software. That is absolutely fine. But you can also use the channel EQ in your DAW, which will also help you tweak things further. So when you're playing your track in Logic and you're listening back to it in the context of the actual song itself, you can actually track the EQ in the DAW using the EQ plugin. So what you'll find here is that if you use the analyzer, you can see where the kind of predominant frequencies are in your actual song. So what I like to do is really get rid of all the really high end, which will just be kind of noise and all the low end, because low end is just going to take away a load of definition. It's not going to be very helpful for us. And I then like to boost kind of around the upper mids just to really help that push. So when you're using the EQ on your amp, you're basically tweaking it to get it to a point where it sounds great in isolation as the clean tone you want it to be. And then when you're EQing in your DAW, you're basically taking that tone and you're just EQing it further to make it fit in the context of the song. So just to summarize, you wanna cut all of the kind of really low frequencies and all the really high frequencies because there's not really gonna be any actual information in there in terms of audio. It's just gonna be adding noise and kind of mud to this actual tone. So you wanna be cutting that and then you want to be looking basically at your analyzer in your EQ, seeing where the kind of most predominant frequencies are. And you just want to be subtly pushing those just to make sure that you're adding some clarity to cut through the mix. And those are normally kind of in the mids and upper mids. And again, we're not necessarily pushing them so much that we're adding loads of mid range into the sound. We're just accentuating it ever so slightly. Now, if you've done all of those things and you're still not entirely happy with the sound that you're getting, then it might be worth investing in a clean boost or any kind of drive pedal that is gonna give you a real kind of boost in frequencies and output. I use a Wampler Tumnus. I have the gain set pretty much at like nine o'clock or almost off. When it's engaged, you don't really hear any overdrive. It's a pretty clean pedal. And I basically just use the volume control to add a little bit more push to my amp sound or to the sound that I have on my plugins. So my advice is if you're still not entirely happy, if your amp maybe still sounds a little bit sterile, then investing in a boost pedal is gonna be the kind of cherry on top if you like. So that's it for today guys. Just a brief look at clean tones and how you can go about achieving them or at least making a clean tone that is really usable, that kind of cuts through a mix and is just really pleasing to the ear. As always guys, give the video a thumbs up if you found it helpful, subscribe, do all of that good stuff. It's really good to see you all again. Thanks for tuning in and I will see you all in the next one.